In this video, I'm going to show you a three-step process for arranging any song for slide guitar. Hi, I'm Dylan Kay, One Finger Guitarist. I help guitar players start playing slide guitar, and if you play slide already, I can help you play even better. Let's get into the lesson. So we're going to apply these principles to the first eight bars of Georgia On My Mind, a song closely associated with Ray Charles, um, but written and recorded by Hoagie Carmichael in 1930. So I'm in open D tuning on my Mule resonator. One of the things that you want to decide before you start um, is basically, you know, what tuning and what key you want to play in. Um, I like playing in open D, so I decided to do it there. And it, it, for the purposes of this particular demonstration, I've decided to play this in the key of D, the song being in the key of D. Uh, the Ray Charles version is in G. A lot of people play it in F or E flat. Um, but it just fits nicely in this particular key. Um, that said, just because I'm in open D doesn't mean I have to play everything in the key of D. Um, so that's just an important consideration. You're not restricted in any way by the tuning. Uh, but that's a decision you want to make early on. So the first thing to say here is that there are so many ways of playing solo guitar. From the Joe Pass, Tommy Emanuel school, through to more minimalist things, um, you know, thinking of like Bill Frizzell or John Schofield. I love them all, but I'm going to take the more minimalist approach here. Um, we're going to leave space, and we don't have to play a chord on every note. Step one, the melody. The melody is the song. So it's important that you pick a song that has a strong melody, something that will stand up on its own even before you put the chords behind it. Um, you know, examples that immediately spring to mind are Happy Birthday or Amazing Grace or uh, a Christmas song or, or something that we can just sing and we don't need the chords behind it. It stands up on its own. Transcribe the melody. Work it out, preferably by ear, from a recording. Vocal recordings are great because it'll help you with the phrasing. Knowing what the lyrics are for the song is going to make a big difference. Knowing where to stretch things out where it doesn't make sense to stretch things out uh, but you know studying a vocal recording will help with phrasing inflection articulation everything and it'll help you remember the melody as well so i'd start there try and do this by ear yourself to start with so here's the melody for the first eight bars So you want to just be able to play it reasonably straight. The rhythm is very simple there. You know, as, as you progress and develop your arrangement, you know, you, you're going to want to make that more expressive. But I just want the bare melody. I want to know exactly what the melody is doing. I want to learn it. And as I say, I want to know the lyrics as well. So that's really important. Those are included in the resources. Um, I'll, I'll put these on screen as well, uh, just so that you can really get into the song. And what's important here is that you can play the melody in different places on the guitar because you might want to do a low octave version or a high octave version or switch between the two. So I'm just going to take as an example to kind of get you started with this, I'm going to take the first two notes and show you some different ways that you could play those. 
So here, here's the first two notes again. I could have played that here. Could have played it. Could have used harmonics. Could have used open strings. of ways of playing the melody and each one's going to have its own character. Sometimes you can use the fact that you can use open strings. Sometimes you might want to slide into a note. Uh, sometimes you might not. So you can use the fact that on the guitar we can play the same note in so many different places to really make it your own and, and allow you to kind of work with the melody and fit it into the arrangement that you want to develop. So once you've learnt the melody in a few areas, on different strings, a few positions on the guitar, then it's time to start looking at the harmony, to look at the chord progression. So the first thing I'd say with this is, just like the melody, transcribe it from a recorded version. In this case, I've taken this uh, from the Ray Charles version. Um, he varies the chords, things, things change, so I've just kind of gone with a particular chord sequence. It's, it's based on what he does in the first eight bars of the tune but explore some different versions. The, the main thing to do is to get the, a very basic version of the chords so that you can then add your own stuff to it. So you can add substitutions, reharmonizations, whatever else you want to do. If you go with a version that already has all sorts of extra stuff added into it, kind of leaves you less room to put your own stamp on it. So, you know, try and find the original chords if you can, if there's, you know, if you can hear the original recording, in, in this case I'm, I'm picking the Ray Charles one because it's such a well-known recording. So a few considerations before we dive into the chords. Um, one, one thing to note is you don't have to play full chords. You don't have to play all six strings. Um, you can play little fragments of chords, double stops or partial chords, bits of chords. You don't have to play from the root, it doesn't have to be, you know, a root position chord. Uh, also, you can play chords with your fingers, or you can play with a combination of fingers and slide. Um, you know, bits. Of... The slide on your finger shouldn't limit you. You can, you can play with it, without it, along with your fingers. Um, so, you know, it gives us quite a lot of flexibility and, and, and differences in sound. So the first chord is the tonic. It, in this case, it's the key of D, so it's a D chord. The melody goes like this. So we're going to throw in a bit of that chord. You could just play the bass note. You could alternate the bass note. Lots of options there just because of the tuning. So the second chord is F sharp 7, a 3 7 chord, which is a dominant chord built on the third note of the scale. So we've got the melody going F sharp to E. So we can just play the F sharp on top of the chord, and then we could play another F sharp 7 down here if we want. To catch that E on top. We could just use the open F sharp as the bass note there. We can also do a little, and just catch this note here is the flat five. So we've got a few options there where we can just incorporate that melody on top of those chords. Then the next chord is going to be B minor seventh. It's the sixth chord in the key. So in this tuning, we can play that down here. There's no melody note at that time. And then we go to melody note there. And then we go to an A minor sixth chord, which is going to be played underneath this melody note. So you could put the minor third in here, maybe the bass note. And then we come down here. Now that note could be the top part of this chord, which is another way of playing A minor sixth. 
So we could go, just play with the slide there, just with one finger and the slide on top, or we could play using our fingers, so we could go. Or just both with the slide. It's kind of nice to throw in that bass note as well. So from the beginning, just to summarize so far, just to sketch this out. just simply trying to play with the melody on top of those chords and, and finding ways of doing that. There are other ways we can do this, but um, rather than provide you with every single possibility, I, I'm just going to give you a few and, and then, you know, just I want you to see the process and how we build this up. Then we go to a G chord. Now the melody note here is an E, which is the sixth of that G chord. So what I would probably do in this instance is play that melody note and keep the G chord around it, but, but not necessarily play them together, so... So I, in this case, I'm actually going to just play the melody note first. I could play it here, or here. And then play the chord. The next chord is a diminished chord, so we can play that here. The melody note that's coming up is a D note, which is just that open first string, followed by an E. So if I put that bar together, I've got... It shows you, you know, how you can incorporate these without necessarily having to put the melody note on top. Um, you know, th there are ways that you could make that work. You could, you could use the slide and one finger to play the G note, for instance, um, but it's a little bit awkward to get that G chord underneath, um, so you can split the notes out. You don't need to have the melody and the chord always being played together. On to the second line, so we, we've, we've got a pick up at the end of the first line with, for the words just an, okay, which was just on top of that diminished chord. Back to D. Again, we can hit that bass note and go up to the seventh fret again. Or if we wanted to, we could grab a bit more of the chord perhaps and play like that and do that with the slide. We could even grab more. Think of the F sharp minor chord on top of the D. You can feel that D bass note underneath. And then for B seventh, the note up at the top is the eleventh fret on this next chord, the B seventh chord which is the ninth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fret with my first finger here and I'm going to just use the slide to play that melody note and I'm also going to catch the third string. And I'm going to drop down to the ninth fret. So I've gone from four. I'm going to grab more of the chord, but basically there's two melody notes, and I'm kind of trying to keep that B note underneath. So over the E seventh chord, which is the next chord, we've got the melody going from G to B. At this point, I'm just going to leave that. Um, I could put different notes underneath. It's a little bit hard to get the E underneath that first note. Um, but you could get it under the second. You can put the seventh underneath. You can you can play kind of double stops. So we could go from the B or you could just let the melody stand on its own. Um, 
you know, there are various options when it's a bit awkward to get the chord underneath. You can you can use fragments, different uh, bass notes that aren't the root note, inversions of chords, or just let the melody stand on its own. Then we go to an A chord, and for the A chord, what we've got is so we're going from E, F sharp to E. Now that F sharp note is the sixth. So we could put a chord under there. It's basically a dominant seventh with a sixth or a thirteenth on the top. And then we could add in that note as part of a diminished chord, so an A7 flat nine chord effectively. Again we could go. fretting behind the slide, so we're going and then just barring across, but letting my first finger play the second fret. So for the final melody note, which is an A, I'm going to play the C7th like this. It's just a double stop, flat 7 and the A note. Then I'm going to play B7 flat 9 chord. It's like taking this down. Kind of diminished thing. And then I'm just going to play a fill over the last two chords, the E7th and then the A7th chord. So I'm going to do something like and then I quite like finishing on a 7 sharp 5 chord which could be like that up here. It gives you lots of tension before you go back to the one chord again from the beginning again. So that little bit would be C7. And then something over the E7. And then back to the So what I hope you can see with this is it's a process. You, you're kind of working through it bit by bit, trying to make decisions. It's like writing a piece of music, really, except that you've got the skeleton, you've got the melody, and you've got the harmony, and now you're just trying to piece them together. Um, and it will take you some time, you know. And you may decide, uh, for instance, Joe Pass was very well known for improvising his solo guitar things um, on the grounds that he felt that if he you know, worked it out note for note beforehand and learnt it, he might forget things. So he would just come up with these things on the spur of the moment. You may find that while you're working through something like this, you have so many options that you decide to, you know, essentially improvise using those options and you don't have a set in stone way of doing the arrangement. That's fine too. So just take your time to work on it piece by piece and then string the whole thing together. Uh, as, as I said, I'm only doing the A section here because I just wanted to demonstrate the process, but you could apply this to the rest of the song or any song. Some final things here just to add in to consider as well are rhythm. It's very, very important. So when you play this, you want to piece it together. You need to decide, am I going to play it in time? Am I going to play it rubato, out of time? Um, but if you're going to play it in time, then it's a case of making sure that you can put all these pieces together and, and make it groove and make it have a good feel. You might want to add in fills around the melody, you know, where there are gaps. Um, you don't need to fill up all the space. Space is good. Um, but, you know, you might play... And... You know, to add something in between the melody notes, you could play something that doesn't use the slide. So a fretted fill, um, lots of things you can do, but, but that might be something that you could consider once you've got the bare bones of it together. You've got the melody and the way that you want to play the chords, and then you can add in extra ideas. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and found it valuable. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, comment, subscribe. It all helps the channel. If you really enjoyed it, uh, please subscribe at onefingerguitarist.com. You'll get a free Getting Ready to Slide course and you'll get regular emails with slide guitar tips and there are all sorts of other courses and things that you can dig into there as well.